Andrew Kramer here with VideoCopilot.net. All right, so there I was. I was on the 17th hole, something like 220 yards away, okay? So I'm thinking I'm going to use my driver. So I take the driver out, okay? Set the ball up a little higher than usual this time. The green is straight ahead and around the corner to the left past all these trees. So what I'm thinking is... I'm going to shoot it over these trees. I'm going to get it on the green, and, you know, I'm going to get a birdie. Par four, okay? Well, it turns out there was a little bit of wind that day, and so I hit the ball, and you know how there's houses on the course sometimes? Well, I hit somebody's house. You'll be happy to know that I hit another ball and just pretended like that wasn't my ball, and, you know, everything was fine. So anyway, today what we're going to do is blemish removal okay so what I have is this bride footage and I'm gonna make a new composition by dragging it out to anywhere basically uh, if you drag it out into the uh, kinda of shadow composition or down here to the timeline uh, before composition is made it will in fact make a composition the length and the size just like the uh, make new comp button but it's bigger for uh, people who are like uh, alright forget about it what we're gonna do or rather, what we're not going to do is we're not going to take the masking tool and we're not going to draw this intricate mask. No, 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 no. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to set up a mat. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, uh, select it, hit Control D, and over in the effects and presets, I'm going to search for threshold. And obviously, I don't have to type it all in, but I have this CC threshold RGB. Oh, by the way, this tutorial can be done with version 6.52. I'm pretty sure. So anyway. Take the threshold effect, drag it down to the bride medium top one, and what we're going to do is we're going to take the green threshold and push this all the way to the top because we're not going to really worry about that. What we need to do is make a mat that turns everything in the face red and everything that's not the face preferably black. So right about here looks pretty good. I'm going to show you why. All right, I know you guys are getting worried and you're thinking, what's going on here? So forget it, forget about that for a sec. We're going to get on to it, okay? Oh, by the way, on that hole, uh, <clears throat> my second ball, I actually got it on the green, on the back of the green, and I had three putts to get it in. And I'm happy to say that I, uh, I got a par on that, on that hole. Anyway, back to it. We're going to select this layer, and we're going to go to Effects, Color Correction, hue and saturation and we're going to desaturate the picture so that we can use the levels color correction levels notice they're in a new location which is fine you know I don't you know, works for me okay we're going to boost the whites uh, the highlights and basically turn this area white okay all this just to get the red to turn to white I know I know all right, we're going to make a new adjustment layer. And for those of you who don't know, an adjustment layer is a layer you apply effects to, and it in turn affects the layers beneath it. So we're actually going to move this layer below our top bride uh, mat layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the track mat. And if you hit F4, if it's not up, you can toggle between uh, different switches, which is good. So we're going to change the track mat to Luma mat, all right? And you're saying, okay, hold on, what's going on? I don't know what you're doing. Well, basically what we're doing is using this mat, okay, we're telling this adjustment layer to only affect the pixels represented by this white area. So what does it mean? Well, I will show you. If I use an, a levels, if I use a levels adjustment on my adjustment layer with the Luma mat track selected, it will only affect that area. Check it out. You can also use this method to, you know, uh, color an apple or color correct only a certain area. It's, I mean, it's pretty versatile. Don't just think about blemish removal. Well, for now, think about blemish removal, but just keep an open mind. Okay, that's what it does. Now, let me show you what we're going to do. Selecting the adjustment layer, I'm going to go up to effects, noise and grain, remove grain. All right, so now... In the remove grain settings, by the way, F3 brings up the effects control, uh, and it's much improved, I must say. We're going to change the viewing mode to final output, 
Very nice. And we're going to change the... No uh, okay, well, before I go on, as you can see, we're already making a pretty pretty nice change if I toggle this on and off. It's, uh, it's taking care of some of those blemishes. Um, let's go and increase the noise reduction to 1.5, okay? Because, because we're applying it to just specific areas, we actually can kind of overdo it a little bit. Unlike if we were to just take the layer alone, add the uh, remove grain, and finalize it. Because what happens is the image uh, begins to look blurry and, you know, areas like the hair or, you know, the background, things you don't want to look fuzzy or blurry, the eyes especially, kind of start getting a little bit soft. So this method, uh, you know, somewhat can, can eliminate uh, that side effect, if you will. So with the adjustment layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit F3 and play around with the effects control. Now there's another uh, there's another area of the remove grain uh, effect I want to touch on and that is the temporal filtering. Basically um, what I gather this temporal filtering does is analyzes the frames before and after and compares them with the current frame and based on the color from around that frame it kind of blends the pixels together so you have a, a smoother uh, image you know it reduces grain uh, what a concept. The motion sensitivity is like how much to look forward and uh, you know look uh, beyond the current frame and you want to be careful in that area. We're actually gonna put it up to 0.95 and that'll just uh, bring the effect down just a little bit just because I don't want to I don't want to overdo it uh, too much. Uh, what the heck we'll go 925. Okay. All right, you know, another thing you may want to do is on our matte layer, here, I'll, uh, if you hit enter or return on the uh, keyboard, you can type in a name uh, for the layer. That way we can keep track of it. Um, what I want to do on this layer, actually, is blur it out. Um, even though the remove grain isn't a very, you know, strong effect, it's good to blur the matte a little bit so that you don't get sharp edges between, you know, unfixed areas and, you know, face areas. Just a good idea. You know, if you notice, the eye is still in sharp focus. Um, we're working with interlaced footage, so don't be alarmed. So if we look at this, I'd say, I'd say we're, uh, we're looking pretty good. If I compare this, um, it's definitely an improvement. Here, I'm going to go ahead and make a preview. Um, I'm going to just hit uh, the zero key to preview this. Today was my about seventh time golfing. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to make excuses, um, but it was really windy and my clubs were dirty and I don't think I was using a high quality ball. Um, you know, it was cold. Uh, my shirt was kind of tight, so I, I think I was losing a little something on my swing. But, you know, other than that, uh, it went pretty good. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and preview that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Here, um, the tilde key. Thanks, John Dickinson. Hit the zero key again, and we'll preview this, all right? I mean, that's, come on, that's that's some high-quality stuff, guys. Now, okay, we have another problem, a slight problem, is we we zoom in here and we say, well, whoa, what, what's going on here? I mean, we got, we have this area that's all grainy, and then we have, then it's just perfectly smooth right here. It just something just seems a little weird about it, you know, and you're thinking, well, you know, look, it's not perfect. I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best to just show you a good method here. You know, you have to criticize it. And to that I say, let's add some grain. Now, the cool thing about adding grain to an adjustment layer that is tracked by a mat is that the grain will only add itself to the area that you're being, that you're affecting. So in this instance, it's, it's perfect. So let's zoom into an area where we have grain and where we have clear. So Select the adjustment layer, and we're going to go up to the noise and grain, add grain, okay? Got some presets here, but this is like DV footage from like a year ago. Let's just pick one, and we'll fix it up. We're going to change the preview to final output. All right. Hey, that looks, hey, that looks pretty darn good, right? You're thinking, man, <laughs> you know, print that to tape. No, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring the intensity down to 0.25. And we're also going to bring the color, because uh, you can see this grain isn't really uh, chromatic like, 
like the grain that's created. We're going to bring this down to say 0.25 also. And we're going to make the aspect ratio 0.9, like our footage, and we're going to soften it 1.1. And maybe make the size 1.2. It's pretty close. Let's uh, let's bring the intensity down to 0.2. Okay, all right. So I mean that does a pretty good job of hiding, um, you know, the the feel of you know really really clean footage. So now if we uh, if we toggle this on and off, I'll go and take a snapshot so we can compare it. If we toggle this on and off, I mean, we're really making, we're really making an improvement, you know, with without losing the detail, you know, on the teeth, or especially, especially the eyes, you know, either either eye. So uh, you can see the importance of making a good mat, but at the same time, um, it's it's very flexible and especially forgiving. So if it's not perfect or, or this or that, you know, you don't have to make excuses like me. All right. Well, it might be a good time now to let you know that Creative Cow is coming out with a new DVD on After Effects 7. The host is actually myself, and hopefully you guys will uh, stay tuned for that. Um, it should be out very soon. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope this tutorial helps you out, uh, especially with the ladies, because I know it's helped me out. Oh, yeah. God, I'm lonely. <laughs>